Shalom, Gahala Yahawa, Bashem Yavshai, Bashem Rakokor Dash, the Lord is my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David, reborn again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yashar Rala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage, we were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. This is 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now that scripture goes into how those who have studied the Bible will be able to basically, you know, stand in front of the Lord, but also in turn shows how we need to be looking into the Bible, right? Like the church of Berea, we got to look into things. And that is one of the reasons why I presented the book of the Antiquities of the Jews by Flavius Josephus. Now, these works, if you're unfamiliar with them, are the historic events and also the, the uh, written perspective of a man named Josephus Flavius, right? Because you got to understand, this Israelite here, he was actually, he's, ta he, he's taken on the name of his captors, right? Uh, Flavius is the Roman name of the family that took him in after the war, which I'll get into in just a bit. Now, Josephus has the same curses upon him that are upon the Negro Latino Native Americans today, where we do not have our original last names or family names, right? But we have taken on the, the family names of our oppressors, the, the people who have conquered us. The Northern Kingdom, those of the, of the European conquest, and the Southern Kingdom, those of the American conquest, right? During the time of slavery. Now, that being said, this book here should be understood as a historical book, right? This is not a religious book at all, okay? The Bible will always supersede every, by every book out there, including these works. But, it is a, but this book here is a very good book to get into if you want to get into the history of our people. Right? And when I say our people, I'm talking about the Negro, Latino, and Native Americans. As the apostles have said, you cannot understand the mystery if you do not know the history. All right? And this here is a great source to find out what happened during the historical events at the time when the uh, temple was destroyed in 70 AD and the events that, for the most part, took place that were known to our people of the time, okay? But let's go and read this preface before I get more into those, those details. The Antiquities of the Jews by Flavius Josephus, an Israelite of the tribe of Levi. The tribe of Levi today would be known as the so-called Haitians, by the way. Preface, Josephus Flavius, born 37 AD to 100 AD, was a Levitical priest historian, diplomat, and military leader, and sole source of information concerning numerous events in the final centuries of the Judean state. He would be recognized today as a so-called Negro, which along with the Latinos and the Native Americans, come from the stock and seed of Jacob, Israel. According to his own account, Josephus was born into an aristocrat priestly family in Jerusalem. He was well educated in Israelite history, doctrine, wisdom, and in Greek disciplines. At the age of 16, he became interested in the principal Judite sects of his time and lived three years in the wilderness with a hermit named Banis. At 19, Josephus became a Pharisee. At 26, he went on a mission to Rome and succeeded in securing the release from prison of several Judean priests. He came home impressed with the grandeur and might of Rome, only to find that Judean revolt 
had started. Josephus was appointed governor of Galilee with responsibility for its defense. After his defeat at uh, Jatopa, he escaped but later surrendered to the Romans. They treated him well, largely because his prediction that Vespasian would become emperor and had come true. This was done in 1669 AD. Formerly known as Josephus von Mattathias, Josephus took the emperor's family's name, Flavius. He was an eyewitness to the siege and fall of Jerusalem, which took place in 70 AD, after which he returned to Rome, where Vespasian granted him Roman citizenship and a pension. Subsequently, Josephus devoted himself to his writings. Though his historic accounts hold accurate, his Roman bias and attempt to exonerate his Roman conquerors are evident. These writings were meant for a Roman audience to introduce them to the Israelite ways and lifestyles. So this is the preface for the works that I've done. In here, you'll find 133 audiobooks which make up the antiquities of the Jews. Uh, and the great thing about this is uh, I've gone ahead and not only did I put in uh, the chapters and the numbers and ordered the, the, uh, the books, but I've also, in the, the visual header or visual title, I've included what the chapter's names is, the number so you know where you're at, and also the title for the chapters. Along there, you also find up here. So you could go ahead and search for certain terms. And what I've also done is I, I've uh, hash marked or tagged certain words. Um, and uh, but let me give you a sample of what these audiobooks sound like. You, therefore, who have learned by sad experience how dangerous a thing impiety is, to put that immediately out of your memory, and to purify yourselves from your former pollutions, and to open the temple to these priests and Levites who are convened, and to cleanse it with the accustomed sacrifices, and to recover all to the ancient honor which our fathers paid to it. For by this means we may render God favorable, and he will remit the anger he hath had to us. When the king had said this, the priests opened the temple, and when they had set in order the vessels of God, and eased out what was impure, they laid the accustomed sacrifices upon the altar. The king also sent to the country that was under him, and called the people to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for it had been intermitted a long time, on account of the wickedness of the forementioned kings. So as you could read here, or as you heard here, excuse me, the readings were talking about chapter 13, which goes into events you could read about in the Bible, but this is a more in-depth historical viewpoint on it. And why is that? Well, because these are the records from our people back before we lost who we were. Okay, because remember, us Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, we have lost our heritage. We have lost all our connections. Remember, we were told by our captors, our conquerors, that we were savages. We were people of no historic uh, backings. And that, you know, pretty much, you know, we are what we are today. Americans, French, English, Japanese, and whatnot. Okay? Our people are a lost people. And hopefully with these historic works and including the Bible, uh, we'll be able to get back into uh, understanding who we are. Now, like I said, these works, uh, they go into certain subjects that are written about in the Bible, but they also kind of go on after that. And they explain uh, what happened with, for example, King Herod's family, how he killed off his um, Hasmonean wife, right? The, one of the Maccabee daughters or and their children, right? It also goes into the, the politics of the time. Like, for example, right here, it goes into a great uh, uh, in-depth 
of the time when uh, Hezekiah, the righteous king of the southern kingdom, started the feast again, right? It says, chapter 13, how Pekah died, right? Pekah was a northern king and died by treachery of Hosea, right? Hosea, I believe, was the northern uh, kingdom king, okay? Who was a little after subdued by Sal Salamansar, right? During the Assyrian captivity, right? When we got taken down. And how Hezekiah reigned instead of Ahaz, and what actions of piety and justice he did. Right, and remember Hezekiah was the good southern kingdom uh, king. Right. Now, let's read this. This is Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh, Hashem Yahshai, and read. No one of these shall fail; none shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it has gathered them now this is ultimately talking about the bible okay and i just want to re reiterate that these historical events that you're about to listen to they are not to supersede the bible okay remember the bible for the most part these books are always accurate right or i'm sorry the these books of josephus are fairly accurate right he does omit uh, certain things like the does he doesn't talk about the golden calf during the time of exodus uh, he doesn't talk about other things which uh, would put him in bad lights by the romans okay uh, he doesn't really get into um, how the romans are the edomites right but again it's very apparent when you listen to these books now that being said he also gives great historical accounts of of his of events that happened during his life. So, you know, that alone is a good reason to get into these books when you have time, when you're not studying the Bible, okay? So, hopefully, Joachim will find uh, this work, uh, you know, edifying. If you have any questions, let me know. But uh, again, enjoy. The next time I want to give all honor and glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakok Radash, double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders, the great millstone, peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.